And it's Strider talking. I'm um, going to tell a little bit about the building of the shell for Our Lady of Guadalupe for the movie Milagros. That's Nina Senko, the uh, character cast for the Lady of Guadalupe. And that's the famous image with a little bit of sage to begin in a respectful way before we start cutting the wood and throwing stuff together. By building a jig, a very simple one, but one that's been uh, measured carefully to so that it should turn out right for Nina when she stands in it. Um, you have to get that right, or else uh, the end is going to be wrong. Now I'm cutting little wafers of pine that are going to be glued together into a custom room for the shell as I demonstrate here. And they have to be cut at just the right width so that they'll make this bend without breaking and with also without being too flimsy. So it turned out to be just a tiny bit more than an eighth of an inch. I returned to the, uh, the outline of Nina very often to make sure that I'm on track. And also, I turn to the Virgin of Guadalupe to remind myself of the spirit of what I'm doing. Just a lot of glue in this project, about two gallons. A lot of clamps. It took uh, about three and a half days to get this lozenge shape thing to um, build up enough with enough uh, glue joints, which took about 24 hours per joint to um, actually four hours per joint to um, cure before I could move the, um, the uh, clamps. And now I'm already on to building the ribs that are going to give this thing some dimension. You'll get the idea here very soon. As you saw in the previous scene, everything doesn't go, or sequence, everything doesn't always go as planned. Things break, you get something just right, you get it all lined up, and all of a sudden it sags on you. But, you know, you find your way as you go. That's the first rib. Lady of Guadalupe smiling upon the project, I hoped. And it seemed like uh, things did go pretty well. Going around the clock here with the clamps. Making more ribs. Just time consuming, easy enough to do after you get your measurements and your jig. Keep measuring that thing, make sure everything's set up. Now I'm using a cooler as approximate height for the stand that Nina was standing on. Now I'm gluing down the ribs, screwing them in good and strong. Now we have a skeleton. Little fine points. Some foam backing in there is what you see that's blue. And then I'm uh, putting a lath down on the inner shell here to make sure it's a very solid surface uh, to work on. This is working on the back, strengthening it with um, Steel straps, both directions. Can't afford to have this thing break. Then covered with a metal lath in the back. Once again, for strength. Better to overbuild than underbuild in the case of a movie when money is so much money's on the line and everybody's time and energy. More glue, as I said, about two gallons of uh, glue went into this thing. I'm about to put um, some canvas down. 
for a nice, smooth, uniform surface. Doing the back first, and then here's the front. I just got off on how neat those textures looked. Uh, finishing up on the front canvas, painting blue, which I will um, Eventually, I will be painting on that surface for um, the sun rays. And now I'm switching while I'm uh, waiting for things to dry. I'm switching projects. Now I'm drawing in the angel, which is, sits at the bottom of the Lady of Guadalupe, uh, supports her underneath, or maybe he's just worshiping her is probably it, because she's so powerful she doesn't need support. Um, in the Im Catholic imagery. And she stands on the moon, which I'm drawing here, and which I'll superimpose onto some plywood as a first layer. Um, Our Lady of Guadalupe stands on the moon because the Catholics realized that the Aztecs moon goddess was very dear to the Aztecs, and that if she stood on the moon, it meant that she was more powerful than their moon goddess. Just as her standing in front of the sun means she's more powerful than their sun god. So they had it all figured out how to usurp uh, the Aztec gods. And uh, of course they accepted her because she's the unconditional loving presence of the mother, which we'd all accept. Um, everyone relates to that. Just getting some uh, early rough in of the angel and now we're switching the the moon has been uh, moved along a little putting the last few lines in to guide me for the painting and I'm painting the gold rays in there by hand first rough and then with much more care which I did later which is not on this uh, video and then uh, go back to the angel I repainted that face many times. This took about three hours. If I were to do it like a real Renaissance painting, I'd have taken about 30 hours, but uh, I didn't have time for that, just to spend on the angel. It took about three weeks to complete this. This is almost complete. We're at the first uh, camera test, which is at a sound stage. Um, it's a little bit too hot a lighting for my camera, but perfectly fine for the um, camera that would be used in the, in the so filmmaking process, high definition, uh, digital video. And this is the finished product on the day of the shoot of the outdoor uh, parade scene. It has like it turned really? out very well indoor at the uh, church. Great on the monitor when we get in close, I think. And that's pretty much it. Took it home and don't know what to do with the thing now, but it was a fun project. Thanks for being with me.